Hello and welcome back to another command block tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be explaining the operations function of the scoreboard commands. It's kind of complicated, so I felt it really deserved its own video. I was planning to get this video out a long time ago. I'm very sorry it got delayed, but it is kind of complicated and kind of in depth. So I'm just going to be going through basically a lot of examples of how it works. We have a scoreboard on the right side of my screen. That's going to be important. However, if you've never used scoreboard commands before, you will check out my other video, please, or none of this is going to make sense. I explain scoreboards pretty in depth in another video. If you haven't seen this, you don't know much about scoreboards, please, please, please watch this, watch that video first, or this one's not going to make any sense to you. So that's my forewarning. Now I'm going to get into the examples. <sighs> So the base function of what we're doing is, and I'm going to be using a similar example to what I used in my old scoreboard video, so I'm not going to go in depth into explaining what my example represents. But in the scoreboard operations, and I'll show you the syntax in a second, but what we're going to do is we're going to type scoreboard players operations, then we are going to type the name of an entity. So I'm going to be using this player head to represent the player and this creeper head to represent a creeper. If you guys see on the side of my screen, I have the player and the creeper. So it can be an entity or it can just be a uh, value, right? And I explained this more in my other video. Once again, check that out if you're not sure what I mean. But essentially, this is the entity. I'm just using a player head and a creeper head to represent the player and the creeper on the right side of the screen. These are their starting values. So we have three and four. And then at the end, we have four and four. And this is the operation that we're doing. So essentially, when I'm trying to explain this command right here, just to show you what the actual syntax looks like, we have the scoreboard, players, operation, then we're using the entity, or in this case, the player, then we're talking about whichever scoreboard we want to use. In this case, we're using the scoreboard score. Once again, please watch my other video if you don't know what I'm talking about. And then we're setting it equal to a different entity, or it could be the same entity with a different score or the same score. For instance, just for display purposes, I am always going to be changing the player's value of the score to the creeper's value of the score. However, you can use the same entity here and have a different scoreboard value, or you could have a different entity and a different scoreboard value. I'm only going to be using one scoreboard value for the sake of display. If that doesn't make sense, just keep watching. I think that'll probably be the most complicated part, but let's get into explaining how these work. So essentially, really the most important thing to look at with this command right now is this equal sign, because there's basically a bunch of different things we can put here instead of the equal sign that affect what the operation argument is actually going to do. So to start out, and actually one more thing I want to point out before we get into the example, player is coming before creeper because player is the thing that's getting changed. In every single example except for one, the only value that's getting changed is the one that is listed first, and that is important. But let's get into the chest example, and then I'll show you how the commands work. So first, we're pretending the player is starting with a value of three, and the creeper starting with a value of four. Then, after we run the equal sign, the player will have a value of four and the creeper will remain unchanged at a value of four. So basically this number doesn't even actually matter for this command for the equal sign. This number doesn't matter because whatever this is, this is gonna have the same value. It's pretty simple. And just to give you the demonstration, um, I'm gonna be showing you, I have commands that set the value for each one, first for the player, then for the creeper. They're the same format, so I'm not gonna show you the commands every time only issue the syntax of the first one. Basically, we set the player's score to three and the creeper score to four. That's what this button, that's what these commands do, just so there's no secrets behind the scene, but that's what I'm using for the rest of these. You can see on the right side of the screen, the player has a value of three, the creeper has a value of four. Now, we're doing the operation with the equal sign. And since the player is first, the player's score is going to be set equal to whatever the creeper score is. So when I press this button, the player score will be set to four. Boom. You can see that on the right side of the screen that now the player and the creeper have the same score. 
And that's the first set. That's the easiest one. That's equals. And I'm not sure if this is going to be really complicated or really easy, but if you understand this, it shouldn't be too hard to understand the rest of these. The next one we have is plus sign and then equals. So it's almost exactly the same commands. So we're starting off with the same numbers. So the player has three, the creeper has four, but then we're doing plus equals. So now the player has seven and the creepers remained unchanged. What's happening here is that we are taking the value the player already has three, and then we are adding the value that the creeper has, which is four. Three plus four, believe it or not, equals seven. I know. And I'm going to show you the creeper every time, even though every single example except for one, this is not going to change. Uh, there is one example where the creeper's value will change. So I'm going to set my values to three and four. Here's the command we're, we're pressing. It's this exact same command, but we have plus equals instead of equals. And now the player has seven. Now what we can also do is keep in mind the creeper still has four, the player still has seven. If I were to press the same command again, it's gonna take seven plus four. Now it's at 11. So you might be saying, well, this is just the same thing as doing uh, uh, score players add four. It is in a sense, but this way you don't need to preset the number and you can change the number and have that affect the math if that makes any sense. And now we can do exactly the opposite. So instead of plus equals, minus equals. You guys should kind of probably already figure where this is going. We start with six, we are subtracting four. So now we're left with two, the creeper remains unchanged. And this can go into negative numbers, by the way. So the player is six, the creeper is four. Boom, now the player has two. Now if I were to hit this button again, it's gonna subtract four more, putting me to negative two, now to negative six pretty self-explanatory. This is kind of similar to scoreboard players remove, but once again, we can actually change the value instead of having it pre-written with the command itself. Now we're getting a little bit more complicated. So we have multiplies equal. And so if you guys are curious what this symbol is, maybe you haven't seen it before. This is the little asterisk symbol. Uh, normally on a keyboard, it's like above the eight. So just in case you guys have never seen that before, this is usually means multiply in computers. Anyways, it's kind of what you would expect. It's multiply. Player has three, creeper has four. We multiply the two together and the player gets the product. Creeper remains unchanged. So if I set these to three and four, here's the commands, exactly the same, just with multiply. I should get 12. And you see, I get 12. Creeper remains unchanged. Now, if I press this again, it's gonna take my current score, which is 12 and multiply it by four, giving me 48. Boom. That's about it. Pretty, pretty simple. Now we have the division sign, which if you understood how the multiplication worked, you can probably guess where this one's going. If the player has eight, Cooper has four, we're gonna divide it. Now the player has two, because eight divided by four equals two, and the creeper remains unchanged. So we're going to set these, 8 and 4. Here's the command, same thing, but with the division sign. And now the player has 2. Now, the only thing that's unique about this one compared to this one is that what if it doesn't divide equally? Well, for instance, what's 2 divided by 4? 0 0.5. If I press this, you can see it goes to 0. The reason being is that when you're doing division, the scoreboard will always truncate, which means that normally it would be 0 0.5, which would round up to one. However, with commands, they do what's called truncating, where instead of 0 0.5, it just, which would normally, that would round up to one. Instead, it's gonna truncate and just remove the 0.5. And this will always happen with your division. So that means that basically, it will always round down if it's a decimal. That's all you need to know. There are no decimals in scoreboards. It's a, it's what we call an integer. And that's it for the division. We have kind of an interesting one. This is the only one that's ever going to affect what the creeper's value is. And it's when we have a greater than followed by a less than sign. So if I open this up, the player starts with two, creeper starts with four. We have these two symbols together and these effectively swap the scores. So now you can see the player has what the creeper score was, 
and the creeper, that's what the player score was. This is the only thing in the operation that will ever affect what the creeper score is, or in a sense, the thing that comes second. This also means that this is the only scoreboard where the syntax order doesn't matter. For instance, I could switch the creeper and the player here, and I would still get the same thing no matter what. It's the only time in these operations where the order doesn't matter and where the second thing is affected. But you can see, whenever I press this button, currently the creeper has four, the player has two. Now the player has four, and the creeper has two. And I can just keep pressing this. It's just gonna just keep swapping them. Yeah, pretty simple. All you need to know, these two signs together, simply swap the scores. This one right here, this next one, which is, you can see the equal sign and the percentage sign is probably the most complicated. Um, if you guys have done math, you've heard of a remainder and division. Now I'm just gonna pre warn you guys, I have never used this operation in all my years of commands. I can't think of any situation where I ever would. I think for most of you, you guys will just not ever end up using this. So I wouldn't worry about it too much but I'm gonna show it to you anyways. Essentially, when you are dividing things in math, if, for instance, I'm dividing 13 by four, then I would get three remainder one, which means I can easily make uh, three groups of four, but I will have one left over. So essentially, if I have this percentage sign and the equal sign, it's going to give is going to set the player, the first thing, to whatever the remainder of the division operation was. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. You'll probably never use this, but I'm still gonna show it. Um, I said, if you guys remember back to algebra, if you did remainders, that's what I'm talking about here. But essentially, just to give like a little bit of an explanation, so I have 13, I'm dividing it by four. So that's one group of four. It's one group of four, that's one group of four, and then I have this one left over, right? So these actually don't, with this operation right here, these three don't matter at all. These don't matter. What does matter is this one that's left over. So with this one that's left over, that's gonna go right here. That's gonna be the extra one. That's what this value is being set to. So just to give you another example with the blocks that I have right here, let's say we're dividing uh, 14 by four, so we have one group of four, one group of four, one group of four. Now this time we have two left over. So these two that are left over is what this gets set to. Uh, like I said, it's kind of complicated. Hopefully that explanation makes sense. If you've done remainders in school before, this will. This is what we're doing here. I don't know if you'll ever need to use this, but here it is, either way. And once again, Creeper not changed. So to show you what this looks like, so I have 13, creeper has four, and it'll give me one, just like in the little demonstration that I just gave you guys. So I hope that makes sense. I don't know that you guys will ever need to use this, but in case you do, that's what this means. The last two are definitely easier, but uh, yeah, you guys can see here in a second that it's these two are pretty much the same thing. I didn't even make the commands for the second one. It's easier, but also slightly different and unique than the first ones. It's essentially the same as the equal sign with one caveat. So right here we have the less than symbol. So it's essentially the same as the equal sign, except it doesn't always happen. Essentially, since we're using the less than sign, it's saying the player has six, the creeper has four. Well then the player is gonna get the creeper's value keeper will remain unchanged. Now you might be saying, well, that's exactly the same as the equal sign. Well, no, not exactly. Because it only happens because the creeper was less than the player. In this example, the player has two and the creeper has four. We're doing less than. And now the player has two and the creeper has four, as in nothing changed. So because it's less than and the player had less than the creeper, the player's not going to change. But in this example, where the player had more than the creeper, then the player sets the value of the creeper. Hopefully that explanation makes sense, and I'll show you guys the syntax here. So this one, we're setting the player to six, the creeper to four. 
we have the creeper score right here, as you can see. It's gonna remove my thing to four because player at six, creeper at four, sets it to four. Now, if I set the player to two, nothing happens because it's already greater. Or sorry, already less than. And the final operation that we have is literally the same thing, it's just greater than. So to show you an example, player has six, creeper has four. Well, the player has more already. The player's value is already greater than the creeper's value. So the player's value does not change at all. Once again, creeper doesn't change either. However, in the example where the player has less than the creeper, and we're using the greater than symbol, the player's value is set equal to the creeper's value. The creeper remains unchanged. So just in case, I will show you guys this as an example. I'm just gonna go in here, change the symbol to greater than. Now, as you can see, currently the player has less than the creeper. So when I press this, I'll be set to four. If the player has more than the creeper, nothing happens because it's already greater than. So that's actually it for scoreboard operations. Hopefully this makes sense. I tried to do an explanation that's gonna give you a good way to make sense of the different operations that we have going on here. I know it can be kind of tricky and kind of complicated. If you haven't seen my other scoreboard tutorial, once again, please go watch this or this isn't going to make any sense. The other thing I will say with scoreboards, the more you use them, the more they make sense. Like you can watch a hundred tutorials, but it probably won't start to click until you start experimenting with them yourself. So that's like my biggest thing with score words, especially is you actually just need to mess around with them, get used to them, experiment with them. And that's when score words are really going to start making sense. And that's when you're going to start being able to do a lot with them. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. However, as I say, every video, check the link in the description to my command block discord. It is a really, really good place to get uh, help with commands. All that kind of stuff i'm in there we have a little realm you can join as well a lot of good people in there so once again please please do join up with that um, but finally i'm just gonna say god bless you all and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it informative bye